doubt about it, he pulls it out of the recesses of your mind. He brings it up from your son subconscious and pushes it to the consciousness of your mind and says, remember when you did this, how could God forgive you? Remember when you did that or said that, how could anyone forgive you? You don't deserve to be forgiven, but yet God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his yeah. only begotten son, yet God so yeah. loved the world that he wrapped himself up in the flesh yeah. in the dice of Jesus and gave his life, yet God so loved the world yeah. that he loved you and I before we ever came to the uh, seat of life. Uh, yet God so yeah. loved the world that he knew we were going to be messed up in our yeah. minds and do some crazy stuff and he knew that we were going to be unforgivable but yet God so loved the world oh, that he yeah. gave his only begotten son. Yeah. Jesus knew when he came on the seat of life that he was going to have to give his blood. He knew that he was going to be beaten down and whipped, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. mercilessly but yet he did it flat yeah. and so you and I yeah. can have a right for eternity. Yeah. Somebody got to thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. So now when we go to Hebrews chapter number 10, I love how the writer begins to express to those in his hearing because he wanted them to get a clear understanding and an eyewitness account of who Jesus really is. Not who he was, but who he is and what he has done, what he is doing and what he will do. He said, I want to remind you because sometimes we have to be reminded of how awesome and how great a thing that God has done for us. See, we get so messed up in our minds, worried about everyday happenstance and stuff that we have no control over. We worry about bills and they're going to be there even after you stop worrying about it. We worry about who's liking us and who don't like us and who's talking about us and who's mistreating us. Yet, God has all that in control. We worry about where we're going to stay and what we're going to eat. Stuff that's trivial because God is going to take care of that. We worry about stuff unnecessary that causes us to miss sleep at night. That causes us to have breakdowns in our bodies. Causes us to be depressed and discouraged and in despair. But yet we forget that the blood covered all of that. The blood paid for all of that. We talk about how we realize that God paid everything in fulfillment. He paid everything in full, but we forget that he really did pay for everything in full. That he really did shed his blood to take care of everything. That he really is our healer and our way maker out of nowhere. He is the one that will regulate your mind and regulate your heart, but sometimes we forget because we allow the enemy of our soul to remind us of how worse of we are and how bad of a person that we are. He reminds us of our failures and our shortcomings, but yet we forget that we got to thank God for the blood. So in Hebrews chapter number 10, in verse number 11, he says, Furthermore, every human priest stands at his altar of service, ministering daily. The priest has to stand every day and wait for the children of Israel to come in and accept their offerings. Some came in with sin offerings. Some came in with trespass offerings. Some came in with thanksgiving offerings. And some came in with this offering and that offering. But the priest had to stand every day. That was their lot. That's what God required of them is to stand every day in the sanctuary and take on the offerings from the children of Israel because every day they had to give something to God in order to obtain that forgiveness from him. Yeah. Somebody got to thank God for the blood. When all God is asking for us to do is to spend some time in prayer because all that is taken care of. All God is asking for us to do is open up his word and read his word because all that has been taken care of. God just wants us to worship him and to yeah, praise him because yeah. everything that we can ever encounter, whatever uh, you're going through now, whatever heartaches or burdens that you're dealing with, whatever may come up the road or turn the corner, yet God has all that worked uh, out in control uh, and all he wants is for us to be a worshiper. Yeah. That's your sacrifice, your daily offering to God. He just wants us to be a praiser. Yeah, That's what he yeah, wants us yeah. to bring unto his altar, to bring before him on a daily basis, but yet we forget about the blood that was shed for us. Huh. Mm. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. For the more every human every human peace priest stands at his altar of service, ministering daily, offering the same sacrifices over and over, and let me add to that, and over and over again. Offering the same sacrifices for the same thing. We get upset if we sing the same songs too many Sundays. We get upset if we do the same thing too many times. We get upset if we think that God is not blessing us the same way he blessed us the last time. But yet they understood that in order for them to get relief from their sins, iniquities, and transgressions, they have to offer up these sacrifices on a daily basis. So over and over again, which was never able to strip from every side of us the sins that envelop us and take them away. 
The children of Israel were keenly aware that no matter what they did on a daily or yearly basis, that they would still be required to do it the next year, mm. even if it was the same sins or different sins, that every day they was required to offer their offering to God every day by way of the priest, no matter what their sins or iniquities were. Can you imagine how many times in a day that you would have to come to the altar to offer up your stuff to God if we were really required to do that? Mm. Selah, marinate mm. on that. Mm. Marinate on that. Mm. Marinate on that. Because we would spend all of our time at the altar for what we say, what we do, for what we should do that we don't do, what we should say and what we shouldn't say, how we think, how we feel. We would spend an enormous amount of time at the altar. But they understood that, yes, we know that we're coming every day and we offer it, but we know it's only going to suffice for that day, for that 24-hour time period. We're going to have to get up tomorrow and try this thing all over again. But thank God for the flood. We don't have to come to the altar and offer a bull or a ram or a bullock or a goat or a sheep or a pigeon or a turtle dove. We don't have to offer any of those things that was required by the children of Israel. Why? Because Jesus, God himself, did it for us once and for all. He became the ultimate wow. offering for us. He died and poured out his life unto death. He took our sins and our iniquities, our transgressions, our lying, our deceitfulness, our anger, all the things that we do and that we allow as a believer, as a non-believer, as a child of God. He took all of that upon himself and he hung upon the cross and took all of that for you and I. When Jesus said it is finished, he meant all of your iniquities, your transgressions and sins are finished. All of your problems and heartaches, all the things that you would do now, present, and in the future has already been forgiven. No, that does not mean we go and do it and say, God, forgive me. But what we're understanding is that God already took care of the matter for us when Jesus said, it is finished. Somebody ought to thank God for the blood. So he says here, he says, whereas this one Christ, after he had offered a single sacrifice for our sins, that we that shall avail for all time, sat down at the right hand of God, meaning that I don't have to do this another time. I don't have to go and offer myself. I don't have to step out of eternity into time and go through this whole sacrificial offering once again. I don't have to walk the earth. I don't have to be lied on. I don't have to be mistreated. I don't have to be betrayed. I don't have to be abused or be used up. I don't have to give my back again to be open. I don't have to get my face disfigured again. I don't have to wear the thorns again. I don't have to be spit on again. I have done it once and for all. So now he sits at the right hand of his yeah. father, waiting for you and I to spend eternity with him. Somebody ought to thank God for the blood. Yeah. Yeah. So it says here that he sat down at the right hand of God. Verse number 13 says, Then to wait until his enemies shall be made a footstool beneath his feet. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess yeah. uh. that Jesus Christ is Lord. All of his enemies will have to bow beneath him. I'm so glad that I know about Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I'm so yeah. glad that I thank God on a daily basis about the blood. I'm so glad that he chose little old me yeah. in the midst of all of my sins and yeah. that he picked me up yeah. out of the miry clay, that he came and saved me from the gutter yeah. most yeah. nobody yeah. else would pick me up. Yeah. But yet the blood that brings us to the highest
I've got to get you to understand this today. The next time the enemy of your soul speaks against you as a consecrated and holy believer of God, that Jesus Christ shed his blood for you and he cleansed you before you got to that iniquity. He purged you before you got to that sin and that transgression. He lifted you up before you even got in that dungeon. He opened your eyes even before they became blind. He opened your ears 